In this video, I looked through 50 different quest pairings and rated them from 1 star, absolutely terrible, to 3 stars, extremely broken pick every time. Last time, I shared a quest tier list with you guys, but this time we're going to more look at how pros look at the quest completion to pick their quest. In the end, I'll also review 17k MMR player x 2 ns games to see if we would pick the same quest. Hope you enjoy. Victim Spectre by 7. So Victim Spectre, I think for it to be good, I think you need to have a turn 5 completion. Like end of turn 5. like Or you get value the turn 5 combat, okay? This quest you need to finish turn 5 combat for it to be good. Turn 6 combat is too late, I think. Um, buy 7, so you buy 2 next turn, and then you buy 1 turn 5. So you're like not even halfway done on turn 5. So this quest is, is just 1, it's unpickable. Open auditions, 6 murlocs or quibbles. So open additions is another quest where you should finish turn 5, I think. Like start of turn 6 is when you want to finish this quest for it to be good. 6 murloc quibbles, you have to ask yourself, is this quest completable start of turn 6? Um, probably not because there's no Murlocs or Quivers in your shop. I think this quest would be good if you had a Tad either in your hand or in your shop. But because you don't have a Tad, it's pretty hard to finish this start of turn 6. So it's not a very good quest. So it's just it's just a 1. Like you can't pick this. So Stable Amalgamation. Have friendly minions attack 16 times. This is what you call a Breathe Air quest. It's pretty good usually. You don't really have to try. Like these two quests you have to try, but this quest you don't really have to try. It's it's a pretty good quest. Like it's top four guaranteed, top five guaranteed. You don't really have to do anything. So this quest is pretty good. It's not like an insane requirement, but usually the more summons you have, the longer the fight goes. And the longer the fight goes, the more attacks you have. And as you can see, I have Bonehead and Prisoner. So this quest is 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 a two. It's pretty good. So it's one one two, and whenever you have a one one two situation, you just pick the two always. Uh, the next selection, what do I have on my board is very important. I have a mana saber on my board. So having the mana saber on your board immediately makes kidnap sack here playable because uh, if you have no death rattle, obviously you can't take a trigger about death rattle quest. But if you have a death rattle, you can finish this in two turns. I think kidnap sack turn six is when you want the quest to be good and uh, you can easily finish this quest turn six. So I think Kidnap Sack here is a 2. Like you just buy a Death Rattle this turn. You can even roll for a Death Rattle. And then you just finish it turn 6. And then and then you have a Kidnap Sack turn 6. Like it's pretty good. Next up, Victim Spectre. Play 5 Ellies or Beasts. As we know, you need to finish this turn 5. Turn 5 Combat. Can you finish it turn 5 Combat? Probably not. You could buy the Hummingbird, swap it, buy it again. And then you can maybe finish it turn 5 Combat. But then you're like... It's a lot of effort, basically, so it it's like 1.5, it's okay. But like this one, like this one being a 2 is better. And then finally we have Secret Culprit, Moira. So Moira is obviously really good on this hero, so you should find any excuse to play Moira because you're Jandis, you can just swap battle cries and it's really good. So 20 friendly die, it's not too bad, it's a breathe air quest for a very good quest. So breathe air for a very good quest is most likely going to be good. So snap pick Moira. I think I think this is like broken. It, it's only broken because you're Jandis, right? Like you have a reason to go Moira comp. So yeah, this this one's a three. So it's like 1.5, 2, 3, and you just pick Moira. Also, another thing you guys can do, you guys can try to think which one you would take before uh, like I walk you through it. Well, if you weren't Jandis, if you weren't Jandis, then... So with quests like these, you have to understand how good Moira is. Because Moira could be really bad or Moira could be really good. Like it's all on a spectrum. Moira is not always good or always bad. Moira is really good if beasts are in. So that's the first thing you want to check. Are beasts in? Yes, they are in because Rylak. So Rylak is just a huge out when you're playing Moira because it's basically having a brand and a Titus. So because beasts are in, you should value Moira a lot. The second thing is, does your hero power want you to play into a brand? Like my... My hero is like, if I find a pile fin with a Moira, I pretty much win the game, right? The main issue usually is with playing Murlocs is you don't have the brand because it's on tier 5. But if you have the brand given to you, you find a prowl fin, you win the game. You find a Felimental, you can just go right at Felimental, something like that, right? There's so many outs with Moira 
But like just because you're Jandis, Moria becomes infinitely better. Another good example is Shutterwalk, right? Like if you're Shutterwalk, the value of Moira goes up a lot. So here, what's on my board? I, it seems that I have a bonehead in my hand. I have a droplet on my board. Tr trigger six death rails for Theo Evidence. I think because you have the bonehead here, any trigger death rail quest can't really be bad. The other thing that's good about Ethereal Evidence is that it it procs start of turn. So you you let like let's say I buy Death Rattle this turn, then two Death Rattles die, and then two Death Rattles die, and then two Death Rattles die, and then I get it start of turn seven, which is pretty much when you want Ethereal Evidence for it to be good. I think you would I think start of turn seven is completely acceptable for this quest. So this quest is a two, it's pretty good. Soul pack. So whenever you see soul pack, what you're supposed to do is just ignore it. So this is just a one. And then Gillian Warhorn, add 16 cards to your hand. Because you're bear off, like this quest is usually pretty hard, but because you're bear off, it suddenly becomes not that hard. So then the question is, how much do you value Gillian Warhorn? The tribes that I value Gillian Warhorn with are murlocs, pirates, dragons, and elementals. So the more of those four tribes, the better. Like if one of those four tribes were in, Gillian Warhorn is trash. If two of them, it's okay. The three of them, it's very good. So um, in this lobby, there's no murlocs, no dragons. So there is elementals and pirates. So it's it's a, it's a pretty good quest. And I think this one's also a two. It's not like broken. If there are more Valkyrie tribes in the game, it would be broken. But I think you can't go wrong with one or three, basically. I ended up picking three because um, it's more consistent. If you pick either of them, like they're both fine. So remember, whenever you pick soul, whenever you see soul pack, you can't take it. So just ignore this one. And then honestly, I know in my quest tier list, I put Amber Bribe in B tier. It's probably F tier. Like this, this quest is very bad too. Me in the future, I changed Amber Bribe rating to F. So don't. So this quest is not a quest either. It's just not consistent enough. It's like pretty terrible. Um, so by process of elimination, the only pickable one is Theotar's Parasol. So I should take Theotar's Parasol here. Uh, I ended up picking Anima Bribe and yeah, it did nothing. So I it was bad. Uh, Red Hand, have friendly minions attack six times. Are you usually attacking six times during a combat? Maybe. I mean... For you to attack six times, you'll need like mana sabers and boneheads. Like red hand, I think it's pickable here. I think it's definitely pickable. You know why? So, so red hand is pickable if you can finish it turn five combat. It's great if you can finish it turn four combat, but it's pickable if you can finish it turn five combat. And in this spot, you buy anomaly, you buy something else, and then next turn you hold cyclone. You're already finishing it turn five combat. So I think red hand's a two here. I think it's pretty good. Um, hidden tr so so hidden treasure vault cast seven spells. How doable is so we didn't talk about how early you need to finish treasure vault. I think treasure vault you need to finish end of turn five for it to be amazing. End of turn six is playable, but end of turn five is amazing. Can you cast seven spells end of turn five? Well, I have a surf and surf on my board. Usually, what you do with any cast X spells requirement is you just stay on tavern two and just buy every spell because the cheapest spells are in Tavern 2. If you just stay on 2, and also Oozing is on Tavern 2, so if you just stay on 2 and cast every single spell, uh, you finish this end of turn 5, and then it's an amazing quest. So this one is a 3. I think, that, I think Hidden Treasure Vault for 7 spells is a 3, because you can so easily finish it end of turn 5, and that will just snowball to a win. And Soul Pact obviously is a 1. So yeah, this is what would happen if you take that quest. I pick the quest, right? I take the anomaly and I don't buy stuff that don't help my quest, okay? I just roll and I buy every single spell. That's how you're supposed to play this. And you cast X spells completion. You just like roll on two, only buy spells, and it's like completely fine. And here, the the play that most sen makes the most sense is Cycle Scout or Surf and Surf. Try to get some more spells and I hit Surf and Surf. Yeah, so easily finish at end of turn 5. Yeah, end of turn 5. And on like level 3, end of turn 5, treasure vault, like this spot is already insane. Uh, if you're not a hero, basically in general, if you're not a hero that wants to cycle stuff usually, 
then Sinfall is just an auto one. So heroes I'm talking about are like Gallywix, Millhouse, Kurtris, stuff that wants to like cycle a bunch of stuff, okay? If you're not one of those heroes, then Sinfall is an automatic one. It doesn't matter how easy it is to complete. Like Destroy 9 is extremely easy, but it's an unplayable quest, so it's a one. Open auditions, play three battle cries. So here it depends on how easy it is to play through battle cries. Open auditions is a quest that you need to finish turn five combat for it to be good. Can you play three battle cries by turn five combat? I mean, if you have a battle cry in your shop, I think this will be a two because you can usually buy three battle cries in, in two turns. If you don't have a battle cry in the shop, then rolling is just, it's just too inconsistent to roll. So without a battle cry in your shop, which it doesn't seem like I have, uh, this quest is unpickable. Like you have to finish this turn five combat to be to be good. Uh, so stable amalgamation. I feel like we've seen this exact quest so many times, but it's, whenever you see this quest, it's a two. Like it it can't be bad. I'm not sure you need to be finishing all these quests. I'm saying you need to finish it for it to be good. Like if you can't finish turn five combat, it's not good. It might be your best, but it's not good. Scepter of Guidance. So Scepter of Guidance is interesting. If you're if you're playing Scepter of Guidance on Millhouse, you have to make sure it's Elementals. If it's not Elementals, it's unpickable. Because, I mean, if you're playing Elementals, basically every single Elemental with a Recycling Wraith on this hero is free. So Scepter of Elemental, Scepter of Guidance Elemental is just a free win. Doesn't matter how hard it's to complete, you would just auto pick it and it's a free win. If it's not Elementals, it's terrible. Like. Anything that's not elementals here is, is actively bad because it just ruins you shop slots. So this is a one because it's not elementals. Double header, summon 18. It seems like I have a lot of summons. I have the Scallywag, I have the Surf and Surf. I have two Scallywags, a Surf and Surf, and a couple of Surf and Surfs in the shop. So summon 18 is a pretty easy requirement. Um, so double header is a two. It's pretty good because I have a lot of summon synergy already. If you didn't have any summon synergy, the quest would be a 1 because it's like almost uncompletable. Uh, the third one, Gassy Mass KT. Uh, so first look at the condition, 10 battle cries. 10 battle cries admittedly is not very hard to do on Millhouse because you can buy battle cries for so cheap and you just buy every single one. The issue with Gassy Mass KT is first of all, you need the Moros, right? You need Moros or Phalanx. Whenever you have K Ghastly KT, it's not like Ghastly Fort. Like Ghastly Fort is completely different. Like 10 Battlecraft for Ghastly Fort would be an amazing quest. Ghastly Mass KT is not amazing because you need Phalanx or Moros for this quest to be good. And Phalanx and Moros are not cards you can easily access, especially if you're playing 10 Battlecries. So that on top of you can't really play Undead on Millhouse. So the third quest is probably a one. It's not that good. Uh, so two is the number two is the best option. Okay, let's. Oh, we have Sire, so we can review two quests. So summon twenty, summon twenty, or destroy twenty. Both completions are pretty good because I've summoned stuff in my shop. Now the question is, which quest is better? I'll just, I'll just take the better quest here. Uh, Yogtastic Tasties is an F tier quest. I think Yogtastic Tasties is pretty bad. Um, but the earlier you get Yogtastic Tasties, the better it is. And because you know you're going to get it relatively early, um, I think it's kind of justifiable. I'd give it like a 1.5. Uh, basically, I would take Gil and Warhorn in most situations, but let's look at the lobby, right? There's no Murlocs, there's no Dragons, no Pirates. And those are three of the four Battlecry tribes I was talking about. So because all three of those Battlecry tribes are gone, it's pretty much impossible to play a Battlecry comp this game. Like you have to play... And also Rylax gone. I, I forgot to mention Rylax. So Rylax also not in. So it's pretty much impossible to get value out of Gillian Warhorn. So yeah, this quest is... The second quest is really bad, actually. It may look good. Like you may look at the quest tier list and be like, oh, Gillian Warhorn's S tier, let me just pick it. No, it's really bad because... There's only one battle cry in. Two battle cry tribes or more, I'd 100% take Gillen Warhorn, but one battle cry tribe is really hard to force elementals. So you just pick Yotas Victacies because it's um because 
to at least does something. This selection isn't too hard. Scepter of Guidance Naga is negative one because I'd rather not have a quest than have this quest. Okay, so this quest is negative one. This quest is just zero, like straight up zero, because you you're never gonna finish a quest, but at least like at least you don't have a negative quest, right? So this one is like zero point five. Like it's not a good quest, but like at least it has some potential with elementals. Okay, like this is negative one zero zero point five on a scale of one to three. So Crag's an interesting hero because his hero power can be used to finish the quest a turn earlier sometimes. Okay, these are the quests. So Snickersnacks. What tribes are good with Snickersnacks, demons, and murlocs? Are those in? No demons. Yes, murlocs. So it's like half pickable. Um, I think Snickersnacks is pickable here. I would give it a uh, two stars. Uh, because there's a shell collector in the shop as well. But usually Snickersnacks, I mean, it's pickable, but... I personally don't like that inconsistent of quests and Snickersnacks is pretty inconsistent. I like if there are demons in, Snickersnacks is a great quest, I think. Without cuz demons, you can play Felimental Feldrake, which is a pretty consistent out because Felimental and Feldrakes are both lower tavern tier units. Uh without demons, like the consistency of Snickersnacks goes way down. So you're not going to get consistent value out of it. So it's like, okay, it's like 1.5. Divine Armor is a quest similar to Red Hand. I think you need to finish it turn 5 for it to be playable. If you can't finish it turn 5. So basically you need to finish this quest in one combat. Can you attack 9 times in one combat? No way. So Divine Armor is terrible. It's a 1. Uh, stable Amalgamation. Play 8 Naga or Dragon. This quest is fine because, as you can see, I have a... Chef's Choice in my hand, so I can just target a Naga. I have the Shell Collector in my shop, so that's another Naga. And I have my Hero Power, so I can finish this quest realistically, like, as fast as turn 6. And you finish this quest turn 6, so so what's going to happen? You play, like, 3 Nagas this turn, you level and buy a Naga, so, so you already played 4 Nagas on turn, like, by turn 5, right? And then turn 6, you can just buy 4 more with your hero power, and then you can finish this turn 6. And as turn 6 stable amalgamation, you just level straight to 6 and then play something. Like, you don't have to play into it. So I, I think this quest is a 2. I think it's pretty good. I wouldn't blame you guys if you take Snickersnacks here. I just prefer if demons were in for Snickersnacks. I think demons is probably more important than murlocs. I, I actually hate forcing murlocs. I think it's not really a forcible tribe. Yeah, you just take the one that gives you consistent 50-50 and you finish it turn 6, so you're not even going to lose. Like, let's see when I finish this quest. Did I finish? Yeah, see, I finished it turn 6, right? Finish it turn 6. I'll go through what I would pick and then and then uh, we'll see what he picks, I guess. So, here. So, remember, whenever you see Soul Pack, just ignore it. It's not a quest. It's a fake quest. So, already number 2 is not pickable. It's a 1. Uh, Devils and the Detail 35 quest. Whenever you guys see 35 attack, just uh, just assume that it's going to be too hard to complete. Like, sure, you can complete it on like turn 7 or something, but not consistently. Like, 35, like any attack quest is going to be a quest you can't finish consistently. So, honestly, I don't think I've ever taken a get your warband to attack quest. I think for 95% of situations, if you get a get your warband to X attack quest, just ignore it. So by process of elimination, you have to pick the third one. Play seven elementals and murlocs. This quest isn't even that bad because elementals or murlocs are murlocs are tribes that you want to cycle, like Selemental or Tad. So it actually helps you get your quest a lot. If I were XTON, I would probably stay down, finish this quest as fast as possible. Um, stay down on two. So Snickersnacks. Immediately, you check if demons and murlocs are in. Both are in. So Snickersnacks is a pretty good quest. 14 cards to hand is a bit hard, but on the other hand, you don't really need Snickersnacks that early on. So I think Snickersnacks is a very high potential quest, but let's see that. So, so I'd give it a rating of 2, just because there's demons and... Oh wait, there's no murlocs. I mean, demons are more important than murlocs, right? Um, Because there's no murlocs, I mean, that hurts it a lot, I think, because you need Primal Fin. So... Yeah, that hurts it a lot. I, I don't think this quest... I think this quest is a 1.5.
But demons are more important for sure. For Snicker Snacks. Stable Among Mation attack 15 times. I think this is a 2. And play 9, nine Max and Relax. This. So I think this one's a 2. This one's a 1. 1.5. Stash of the Scribe for 9 Max or Cold Wars. I think in general with Stash of the Scribe, you need a quest that finishes in combat. I think an active completion for Stash of the Scribe, basically what ends up happening is you actively complete Stash of the Scribe, and then you stay down to actively complete it, so you're getting trash spells, and then you're just forever behind. So I think an active completion for Stash of the Scribe is in general terrible. You probably need a, a quest like have, have friendly minions attack 18 times for Stash of the Scribe, in that way, you finish it in combat and then get value from it. Start of the turn, and that way you're also on higher tavern tier levels, so you get better spells. So in general, staff to scribe, just remember you need a a passive completion. Uh, I think uh, stable amalgamation is probably the best option here. Let's see what ha what he ends up doing with Snickers next. He ends up playing. I mean, I would assume it would be Felly Feldrig, right? Some sort of demon comp. Yeah, I mean that's what I said. Like demons are what you need Felly Feldrake. Also he left Mindmuck on his board for some reason. But remember, Snickersnacks would be unpickable without demons. Okay, so Simfall. Remember, if you're not a cycle hero like Galavox or Melhouse, Simfall is an automatic one. Cookbook, if there's no mechs in the lobby, Cookbook is an automatic one. So I I mean you just have to go kidnap sack. It's, it's the easiest kidnap sack. Did he pick kidnap sack? Yes. So that's just that I mean that's just a one two one type situation. Uh, Divine Armor. You need to finish it turn 5 to be acceptable. Can you play 4 Nagas or Pirates by turn 5? Probably not, so Divine Armor is default a 1. Unpickable. The next option is Tide Oracle Morgul by 10 minions. So this one's an interesting one to evaluate because usually how you play Oracle Morgul, you summon it from hand. Yeah, I don't really know when you... Like, you don't really need to finish it that fast, but by 10 is kind of a lot. So by 10 is a lot, honestly. Like, I don't think this quest is that good. Uh, by 10 is a lot. You're probably going to buy 10. Like, when are you going to realistically buy 10 by? So you buy 2 this turn, you buy 1 next turn, and then you buy 3 on turn 6, you buy 1 on turn 7, and then you buy 3 more on turn 8. So, so you finish this turn 8. So... Just the third, the second quest. Just, just understand. It's basically turn eight. Get a tide oracle morgul. You're never buying ten by turn seven. So turn eight tide oracle morgul is that good? Not really. I mean, you're basically just playing Thorin, but not really because spending gold is easier than buying minions. So I don't think second quest is that good. Uh, the question is whether the third quest is good. Uh. Turbulent Tunes Cultist. Remember, when you have a cast 18 spell condition, the only way to play it is staying on Tavern 2 or playing Quill Wars, but usually you just stay on Tavern 2 to complete the quest. So if you stay on Tavern 2 to finish Turbulent T Tombs Cultist Asara, are you happy? No, right? Because this this unit, like, it doesn't do anything for you. On the other hand, if, tur if this were Turbulent Tombs Phalanx, 100% you take it because you stay on 2, you finish Turbulent Tombs failings very quickly and you're pretty happy but because it's cultist asara you f you rush the quest and it still doesn't do anything for you so you can't pick it so is the turn 8 tight oracle morgul good no not really but it's better the first one's unpickable and the third one's unpickable so you just go with the second one and as you can see like the quest is not that good like you just go eight because like a turn 8 tight oracle morgul is just too slow like, it's not like his quest is good, it's just he picked the best one. Boom Squad. Okay, so whenever you see Boom Squad, just ignore it, it's not a quest. Then you have Buy 7 for Friends Undead. So Undead isn't that good of a tribe to get from Friends Along The Way. The reasoning being, Friends Along The Way is better when you can cycle the tribe you're getting. So, do you have a reason to cycle Undead? Like, pretty much never. Do you have a reason to cycle Elementals or Murlocs? Yes. So friends along the way, uh, undead is not very good, basically. So buy seven. When are you buying seven by? You buy you buy two this turn. You buy one next turn. You buy three, and then you buy one. So you're finishing at turn seven. You get this quest start turn eight. 
you get two undead you don't play undead so this quest is unpickable it's a one so i mean as we all know stable amalgamation is just a default two so you probably just take that one so immediately i mean i don't really see what the quest is but immediately i see ghastly math lord gains and that quest is so broken if you have any reason if you have any excuse to pick it you just pick it um so so immediately i'm looking at ghastly math lord of gains and i'm like by 12 i mean just buy nagas for it it's pretty broken so immediately ghastly math lord of gains is the three you buy nagas you stay down on two you buy like every single naga you just buy every minion, you finish it on like turn 7 or whatever, and you have Ghastly Mass lower gains. And you're pretty happy about it. Because the quest is so broken, it's just a 3. Instant direction, instant stabilization when you finish the quest. Um, Evil Twin, add 20. Like, Evil Twin is just a consistent quest. Like, you just pick it, whatever. If, if it's your best option. But Ghastly Mass lower gains is a 3. What's the second one? Trigger 6 Death Throttles for Mystic Spore Bat. Now, this quest is also giga broken because... Spore Bat is broken, okay? And it's triggered Death Rattle for Turbulent Tombs. So this quest is also a 3, okay? So both of these quests are extremely good. And and it seems he has, look, he has Barnstormer Mana Saber in his shop. So he can easily finish this on time. You get Mystic Spore Bat, Turbulent Tombs. And this quest is extremely good too. So I think the second third one and the third one are both broken. And you can just pick whatever because they're both broken. Oh, he even has the Surf on Surf on the board, which makes him finish this in two turns. He has Turbulent Tomb Spore Bat on turn six. So this one might is probably even more broken because you can finish it in just two turns. If you can finish it in three turns, it's broken, but the third one's probably still better. But because you can finish it in two turns, I don't know. It's like it's close because they're both so good. Right, let's see this five demons are dragons so immediately i see the dragon in my hand i'm like okay this is completable um 12 friendly minions die for friends and nagas and soul pack so soul pack is not a quest okay so it's between one and two friends a long way nagas when are you finishing this by are you finishing at turn five combat are six minions gonna die i mean probably if you position badly six minions are probably gonna die two combats you get friends along the way nagas on turn 5, it doesn't even matter that it's Nagas, just getting friends Nagas turn 5, like, um, turn, like, start of turn 6, is already a good quest. So, I think friends, like, friends Nagas is already a 2. I don't really care that it's Nagas, like, of course, if it were Ellie or Murloc, it would be better, but it doesn't really matter what tribe it is. If you're finishing any friends along the way on turn 6, start of turn 6, it's going to be a good quest. So, Immediately, the second one's a good quest, I think. Now, the first quest, five demons or dragons. So, it depends. If you can finish Kidnap Sack turn five, it's a great quest. If you can finish it turn six, it's acceptable, but turn five is great. Uh, and I would try to finish it turn five. Can you finish it turn five? You're a leaf. So, you can just discover this demons or dragons. Um, there's a trickster in your shop. So, both of these are good. If it were me, I would prop. So, so this is like a 2-2-1 two, two, scenario. Like, this is good because you have the dragon. If you didn't have the dragon, you can't finish a turn 5 consistently. So, it would probably still be okay, but it would be a lot worse. This is just going to be a good quest, like always. So, and this is terrible. So, so I think 2 is probably the best option. Okay, so, play 3 Battle Cry for Kidnap Sack. So, I'm looking at the Geomancer in shop, and I really like that. I think Kidnap Sack... 3 Valkyrie is a great quest because you can finish it turn 5 so consistently. Like, you easily just stay down, buy 2 Valkyries, finish the Kidnap Sack, and you're really happy about it. So, turn 5 Kidnap Sack, already a 2. Like, pretty good. 16 Die for Turbulent Tombs. I think Turbulent Tombs is, in general, kind of broken. I'd look at the tribes first. You want Beast, Mech, and Undead with Turbulent Tombs. Beast and Undead are banned. And you don't really want to force mechs. If beasts are undead are both in, it would be obviously turbulent tombs. But in in this tri in this uh tribe structure, there's only mechs, and mechs is like the weakest of the turbulent tombs tribes. So I'd probably not pick that one. It's not that good. And ghastly mass utility drone. So utility drone is trash because mechs are trash. 
Uh, you don't really want to rush Ghastly Mask. It's like the same issue with Cultist Asara. Like, this isn't a quest you want to rush. So it's... Like, you rush Utility Drone and then what? <laughs> and then you have no tempo. So uh, it's obviously Kidnap Zack um, because it's the best one. And he goes... He notices that and he immediately takes Kidnap Zack, right? Yeah, like he hovers the tribes, he sees there's no beasts or undead, and he's like, okay, Terminal Tubes isn't that good of a quest. And then you just uh, pick the stack. And then you buy a Geomancer, and you finish the quest next turn, and then you're happy. That's it. That's it, chat. Hopefully you learned uh, at least something. And this will be on YouTube as well.